Paper Cut here with another replay review, and this one is one I'm really excited about because I'm helping a brand new player. <clears throat> this is the, my favorite type of player to help because brand new players who feel like they are successful with the game will stay and play, and that's what we all want. We want more people to play our wonderful game AOE 4. So, Lord Arrow sent in here, uh, posted on the Reddit, and saying he just doesn't understand what's happening. Basically, he keeps losing. He feels like opponents are just doing things faster than him, and he can't win. He doesn't know why. Um, a lot of people gave us some great advice, but honestly, when it comes to understanding the game, it's it's really important of a visual, in my opinion, which is why I like doing these replay reviews. So um, I noticed him and his friend have been doing a lot of custom games, I think practicing the advice that people gave him. Um, so I'm watching one of his custom games against the AI, because really, the opponent doesn't matter at this point. It's about really, in my opinion, the first 10 to 15 minutes, it really, really defines how well you play in the game. Um, and we can understand a lot of the theory of how he's thinking about the game um, when playing. So let's hop in and see the opening. Okay, so here's our first thing. Right now, what I'm noticing is that you're clicking each villager individually and having them do something. This is taking a lot of time. Why does that matter? Well, a, a key part of playing online is how efficiently and how quickly you can do things. Now, at your level, you don't need to be, you know, BC level APM or any other pros level APM, but you do want to try to do things in a way that makes sure your villagers are always doing something. The reason we always want our villagers doing something is because every moment they're gathering a resource means that you're not losing a resource compared to your opponent. What's your goal right now is kind of the question we need to ask and answer. You're in age one. And the fact of the matter is, is that you're probably not going to do any sort of damage against your opponent in age one. You need to get to H2. That's when you get a lot of important things. You get an archery range. You get a stable, which allows you to make archers uh, and horsemen. You can get a blacksmith. You can make rams. And rams are really the only way you can actually finish a person in this game outside of making an, an insane amount of units. They're also the reason... So you want to get the feudal. And you want to get the feudal quickly and efficiently. Why? Why can't I hang out in the Dark Age, get my eco set up, and then go feudal? Well, if your opponent beats you to feudal and makes units and attacks you, you can't defend. If a bunch of archers show up, the only way you can defend is in your TC. If they make a ram and attack you, you have nothing to defend it with except villagers. So you will die. So if your opponent beats you to feudal and gets there and gets to do a lot of things, they can secure resources, they can attack you, and you can't stop them. So oftentimes the main goal of Dark Age is to get to feudal as fast as possible. And then you start doing a variety of things. Um... If there are some civs that do play around a little bit in Dark Age, Mongols being one, because they have the ability to tower rush, you as English, actually, you do have some Dark Age strats, but at your level, let's not worry about those. At your level, let's worry about a very basic strategy with a very direct goal. So your goal should be to get to Feudal. You're going to want to make the Council Hall, which allows you to make longbows out of it very quickly. And you want to make longbows, you want to attack your opponent. It is tried and true since day one of aoe4 but it's a good strategy to learn how do i manage my economy how do i attack how do i find space to attack so that if you want to try other civs you have that basic toolkit of getting to feudal making getting my economy set up and then attacking so let's talk about what a good build order would be for english here you could find i would suggest you youtube <clears throat> search english longbow build order um and you'll find probably 80 different people who have made an english longbow rush YouTube build order. I'd suggest you pick someone who is of a higher level um, because they will have an efficient build order. So like Beastie, Valdemar, any of the pros. Um, I'm, I'm sure almost every single one is an English Lumbo guide. Um, so you want to look at those. But to, to stamp it here, one thing you should always do is when you start, just box over all of your villagers and send them onto food. Even if you're going to send them somewhere else, at least have them start on food so they're gathering something. Then you want to click your TC and click Q and queue up as many villagers as you can. Because you don't want to not be making villagers. Making villagers consistently helps your eco. And if you don't have a villager and your opponent makes one, then all of a sudden you are behind and you have less resources. So you want to so when you first enter the game, box, click on a sheet. Click on your town center, Q, 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 Q. I suggest you hotkey your town center. I put my town center on the side of my mouse. So I click the side of my mouse. Boom, I'm at my town center, and I can immediately hotkey Q. I know for on the game, it starts as H, but whatever feels comfortable to you. Then you click your scout, and you put them on control group 1, so control 1, and send them to the middle of the map so they can start gathering sheep. And once they're sent to the middle of the map, then you can start your build order, which is pretty simple. You want all six villagers on sheep. 
The first villager should, that comes out, you should click and have them go directly to gold. And when they get to the gold, they should build a house and a mine. You'll notice you have 10 population, you have 7 already, so you need to make a house pretty quickly so you don't get population capped. Which means you can't make anything else till you make another house. So you should drop a house and then a mining camp. And you can actually do that by clicking mining camp. You, you, you can shift click, you can hold shift, click mining camp, and then click house. And what you're, or I would actually do house the mining camp. So hold shift, house, mining camp. So they'll drop a house, drop a mining camp, and then start mining gold. The second villager that comes out, you should also send to build that mining camp. And then the third villager that comes out should also go to gold. So you send three to gold. And this is going to be a little inefficient, but I want to make this easier for you. So send three to gold, and then you just rally to food until you get 400 food and 200 gold. And your goal when getting a feudal is to hit 400 food and 200 gold at the same time. If you hit 400 food and 200 gold at relatively the same time, that means you got to feudal efficiently and probably as quickly as possible. While you're, while the villagers are popping out, you should track your scout and have your scout run around the outside of the, uh, of the map and get sheep. You start with only three sheep. And your villagers will burn through that pretty quickly. So you don't want to send your scout across the map and then back because you will run out of food, which will force you to go to other food, which will probably be inefficient. Berries are very slow. Sheep are faster. So you don't want to go on berries if possible. So you want to send your scout to probably to the middle of the map, bring them back down, and then rally back to your base and drop off any sheep that you find. In this early game, it's better to watch your scout a little bit more because your scout can see sheep but might not run close enough to them to gather them. So what I do is that I will keep checking my base and queuing more villager I need to. And then I double click one, double tap on one, and I'm back on my scout and I'm checking. So it's kind of bounces back and forth like this. You'll be slower at it, which is fine. But you want to get that groove down because you don't want to miss out on sheep. Um, lastly, you don't want to over queue villagers. So queue up all the villagers you can when you first start. But then afterwards, you want to keep two villagers in the queue because if you over queue villagers... You will technically have the food to age up, but you've put them into villagers who are sitting to queue. But you want to get up as soon as possible. Because watch what happens. So right now, you're doing one by one resource split, which means these villagers are not gathering, which means you're losing on resources. So when you have the issue of, I feel like when we play against people, they're so much faster, that's because your opponent is getting to feudal faster and gathering resources while they do it. Which means they just have more than you. So of course they feel faster because they are being faster. But not because of anything special they're doing. They're just not doing each individual villager. They are doing groups and then rallying out to where they need to go. I know there are some English build orders that call for two farms. And it's nice. But for the purposes of your learning at the start, don't do that. Second, small thing, but important. Don't go to your farthest wood line. This, your villagers had to walk all the way across, which is pretty slow at the start. They could have done this wood line right here. And in fact, they didn't even need to do a wood line yet. Eventually, when you age up, you can actually start off on these, what we call straggler trees, which are right next to your TC, which are pretty efficient. They're pretty close. Each of 150 woods, so you actually get 450 wood from the jump by just doing the straggler trees when you first age up. When you get 400 food and 200 gold, you will send the three villagers on gold to build the, uh, to build the council hall. You will leave four on food, so you can keep making villagers. And then you have the rest of the villagers go to wood. And you're going to gather a bunch of wood. And you want to get to about 10 to 12 on wood. When the villagers who are making the council hall finish, send them back to gold. And then when you get to about 10 to 12 on wood, then you keep rallying to food. And your goal at that point is you want to make longbows and attack. And you want to make longbows and go attack your opponent. And you want to attack where their resources are located. So I'll get to this in a second. Let's, let's still talk about the opening. When it gets about 10 to 12 on wood, start rallying to food, you about 10 to 12. And what you'll notice is you'll start getting resource imbalances where you'll have a lot of one, but not a lot of the other. And as you see these resource imbalances, when you check your resources on the left, rally villagers to the resource you need. So if you're playing and you're making longbows and you realize I have a lot of wood, but not enough food, that's the sign to you. You have so much wood. Okay, well, I'm going to rally my villagers to food instead now. And you should be making farms. And with English, you get a bonus for them being next to the mill. So make sure you drop a mill. So you'll get bonuses as you get farms around mills. So you want to keep adding farms, but still making military and attacking. And that's what this game is difficult, that balance. But you want to try to follow that balance as much as possible. So once again, one of those videos on an English Lumbo Rush will really help you see this in action um, and see how someone's doing it. Um, and that's my starting advice to you is that opening 
and then making sure that villagers are always gathering something. And you know how you rally them to an open spot? Don't do that. Rally them to a resource. Even if it's something you don't necessarily need, at least they're gathering something. Um, and that's a cycle of I add production. I keep adjusting my villagers. I keep making units. I keep trying to attack until the point where you can you can drop a blacksmith, get siege engineering, drop a ram and attack and actually try to finish the game. Cool. So now that I explained that, let's actually watch your opening here. I'm not going to mention these things again. I, I could keep harping on this, but like... It is what it is in this game. But just notice your age of timing. An average, for an average sieve, doing it efficiently, you're probably aging up at the three and a half to four minute mark. So, yeah. Don't, yeah. So, don't don't mess with his villagers. Go gather sheep. Because you, you need sheep. Cool. You're adding the mill, so you know that. I just want to make sure. So, you notice how the computer is already... Uh, aging up on AI hard hardest, they are actually aging up at a relatively reasonable time. This is when a, a a person playing should be aging up. So you notice your your ally is aging up. I assume this is your friend. You guys are playing a custom game together. He's aging up. Um, so he did the two farm opening correctly, and you notice how he did it. He dropped two farms, but then he's still riding the food. He has two on gold, and you can do two on gold in this opening because the farms take a little bit more time without the mill. But they're permanent food, which is nice. And as he's aging up, he's aging up with one, which is a little bit inefficient. I would... Now he's sending more, but like, you notice he's on wood now, gathering those straggler trees. And he has been this whole time, it looks like. Um, but you should be aging up right now. And that's why he feels like you're behind. So I notice you're dropping these houses back here. Why are you doing that? I'm, I'm guessing what you're thinking is, oh, well, I'm keeping them out of the way. Once again, your villager had to come down here and build these houses which was far away it's a walk he could have just built the houses next to the gold so when he's done he could get right back on the gold and two you don't need all these houses yet you only you now have 50 supply when you only have 13 units it's actually better to make them as you hit it you could do two houses at a time but you don't need to do so many in a row be careful about you you don't need to drop these campfires yes you get vision but you are also spending 25 wood a pop which is just kind of a waste so you notice your AI is hitting AI uh, feudal, and you still have not hit feudal at all yet. So you really have don't have the capacity to do anything right now. We're gonna speed a little bit more. What I do like is now that you're now you're, you want to scout all this area you haven't uncovered yet. There might be sheep there. There might be things there. Um, once you start making units, we can talk about attacking. So I assume you're gonna make units. So your ally is making units. He's crossing right now. So here's the thought process. He and I'm gonna use some of the examples since you haven't aged up yet. When you're attacking. Especially just English, your longbows shoot very far. You want to think about where is a good place to attack. The things you always want to cut off are food and gold. Gold means they can't go to the next age and get better units. Food means they just can't make units at all. So the nice part about how this game generates is that the gold is usually always on the edge of TC. So you can shoot it easily. And food after the initial sheep are outside TC as well. So look at everything you can shoot. You can shoot this, this, this. And he can even poke the wood line if he stands here. So he has a lot of options to attack, and attacking any of these is really good. Because he, if he kills villagers, that gives him advantage. If he makes them go to a different resource, them walking, they're not gathering resources. And then they might gather a resource he doesn't need. But if he can keep them off resources, he will successfully slow him down, which gives him more time to make more units, and that cycle kind of continues. Um, and his goal would be, since he scouted these food sources, to make sure he can't get on these resources. You don't want to get on this gold, this gold, this sheep or deer this deer so it would be to keep rotating and keep keeping him off resources and sniping vills while he's doing that um and as he's doing that he's getting more and more villagers his eco is getting better um and he's trying to slowly like basically suffocate him of resources since you are not in feudal though you can't do that and that's why i emphasize getting to feudal quickly right now your opponent in this case is doing everything he wants he has nothing holding him back your eco's nice but at, to, to give to give an example, if you were playing a normal opponent who is potentially rushing castle, if this was a normal HRE player, he is dropping castle right now, and you have not hit feudal. That's the sort of like thing we're running into, right? So let's watch a little bit more of this and just see your process here. But yeah, so I remember in your comment on AOE4 Reddit that you're like, I'm I'm building barracks and I have people rushing me. Yeah, you have people who have hit who have made a lot of units at this point at eight minutes, or they've hit castle and made units. And you're just pretty behind right now. I like how you're dropping a lot of this production, but... And your eco set up so you can start making things immediately. I noticed you dropped a little bit of everything, right? 
little bit of hodgepodge. A key part of this game is identifying for your Civ what is a good comp to run. What is like a power comp? For you, it's Lombos. You want to make a lot, a lot of Lombos. They have great range, they have great damage, but they're slow and they'll be weak to Horsemen. Horsemen do extra damage against Longbows or against ranged units in general. So then you want to make Spears. Spears hurt cavalry, and they're a good front line. So you have a front line of units that attack melee and back line, which is your ranged units. So your comp should just be Longbows and Spearmen. If you get more gold, you can get men arms. They're tough. They're really strong, but they're expensive. So you want to start with Spearmen early, and then as you get better eco, you have more villages on food, more gold. Then you can afford to do men arms. But so you notice how the AI is attacking at this point? That's because they had so much time to, to do stuff. Your ally is also dying because he made an initial units and then stopped making units. The AI hardest... The, the goal of this AI hardest is that it's a test to see if you can efficiently and continuously make units. If you struggle to make units, you will not be able to beat the hardest AI because they will make units. You notice he's losing he's too many archers, you're losing, you have units on you. If you can continuously make units, you will be able to beat the hardest AI. But this is a good practice. The hardest AI teaches you, can you get to feudal efficiently? Can you keep making units? If you keep making units, you will beat the hardest AI. Um, overall, I hope that was really helpful to you. Um, on my channel, I have a lot of different replay reviews. If you want to see different sys playing, if you want to see different examples of feedback, I have videos on beating AI. I have videos on what you should learn from beating AI. And of course, if you are potentially need coaching or want more support, my Discord link's in the uh, box below. Um, but hey, man, I hope you stick with it. I hope you get better. Once you start understanding the game, you will improve very quickly. Um, and yeah, just stick with it. It's fun. It just has a little bit of a learning curve. Um, I hope this was helpful to you. Good luck.